What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in yesterday's video we talked about how to adjust the exterior lighting settings inside of your models. Now we're going to talk about how to add interior and artificial lighting to your renderings. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I wanted to give you kind of an overview of the options available inside of twin motion for adding different artificial lights to your renderings. And so specifically in this video, we're going to talk about things like uh, the spotlights and the uh, omni lights and things like that, and how you can use them to light your model. Um, so to start off, let's talk a little bit about lighting inside of Twin Motion. So right now, what we have is we have a daytime view of this building. So the daytime view means we have sunlight shining into the building. But if you go up to this eye and click on this and click on the sun, you can adjust this so that instead of being daytime, we now have nighttime. And so with nighttime, you can see how this allows you to do a lot of different things, um, or this allows you to kind of turn the exterior sunlight off. But what we want to do is we want to turn the exterior sunlight off, and we also want to add some artificial lights to our scene because now it's very dark with that sun off. So in order to do that, you're going to open up this window on the left hand side of the screen and you're just going to go in here and you're going to click on this little drop down and you're going to click on library. And library is going to allow you to access your library of different items that you can bring into your renderings. And specifically in this case, we want to talk first about the lights. And so if you click on lights, you can see how this gives you a number of different options for different kinds of lights that you can add to your scene. And so let's talk a little bit about the specific kinds of lights that we have in here. So the first light that we have in here, and you can just add these to your scene, um, is called the omnidirectional light or the omni light. And what the omni light is going to do is that's going to generate light outward from a center point in every direction. So you can see how if I drag this into this point, or if I drag this into my rendering, this is emitting light in every single direction. So this is great for like brightening up a scene or something like that. So like for example, let's say that I wanted to light up kind of the back of this rendering, I could take this Omni light and I could place this in the back and you can see how that's lighting everything. You can see how my light is adjusting dynamically as I move this around. So let's take a look at a few of the different options that we have for editing our lights. So um, you can turn your light on and off by clicking right here. And there's an option here to upload an IES. So if you want to use a certain kind of light, you can actually upload a file in here so that this will be a correct lighting. And one thing I will note is it's probably a good idea to make sure your models are to the correct scale if you're going to use an IES light because you're trying to figure out accurately how a light is going to have, um, how a light is going to light a space. Um, in addition, there's an option in here to adjust the intensity. So that's going to adjust how bright this is and how much light it's going to emit. So you can see how you can either drag this up and down or you can type in a value. So I could type in a value like 5000 and hit the enter key to set this to a value of 5000. Um, reflection is going to affect um, how much this light is reflected um, or how much this light bounces off of surfaces. So you can see that bouncing more off of this surface over here um, because that surface has a higher reflection value set maybe than some of the other um, the other materials inside of your rendering. Um, you can adjust the light color so you can make this either a cool color or a bright color by clicking and dragging this up and down. Under the more function you can also create a colored light if you want to. So if you wanted like blue light or something like that you could add that using this as well. Um, radius is gonna affect how far out this light affects everything in your rendering. So right now you can see how this is affecting everything in a 17 foot radius. If I drag this in, you can see how it's only going to calculate my light inside of a six foot radius. I would recommend keeping this as small as possible um, because the further out this has to go, the more calculations Twin Motion has to do and um, the more it's going to kind of slow down your PC. On the other hand, do make sure that you make this wide enough that your light actually gets into spaces like this backspace so you don't have this weird like shadow area in the background. 
So one function I really like about this particular um, light feature is that you can actually set it to cast shadows. So you can see how this light right here, you can actually turn the shadows feature on and you can use this artificial light to actually cast shadows inside of your rendering. So you can see how if I do this, this is basically casting a shadow based on anything um, inside of your model. So these chairs are casting shadows and other things like that. Um, that's a really nice feature. I will note though that um, sometimes you may not want to turn that on because that's going to create a whole bunch of additional calculations your PC has to do. So be kind of choosy on when you use this. And then day cycle is going to set if your light is on or off um, or if your light turns on or off depending on if it's nighttime or not. So you can see how inside of this, uh, if I drag my time like this, that light doesn't turn on until after a certain time. So at 2020, it doesn't turn on. At 2026, it does turn on. So you can set all of your lights so that they only turn on when, um, when it's nighttime so that you're not doing a whole bunch of complex lighting calculations in here during, the day, during your daytime render. So that can be a real processor saver. So we've talked a little bit about the Omni light. Let's look at some of the other lighting options that we have inside of Twin Motion. And I will note, by the way, that this this can kind of be treated like other objects inside of Twin Motion, in the sense that um, in the sense that I can move it like this, and then also, if I can ever get it in place properly, you can also copy it like other twin motion objects. So if I have this selected and I hold the shift key and drag this, this is gonna create a copy of this and the copy function is gonna come up and I can use this to create multiple different copies. So in this case, I created two copies and you can see how for each one of these, um, these got created as instances of the same light. Meaning if I was to come in here and adjust like the color of them or something like that for one of them, you can see how all three of them are going to change. So because these are instances of the same object, these are all kind of linked so that now if you change one, the others change as well, which can be a huge time saver. So now let's talk about some of these other lights over here. So in addition to an omnidirectional light, you can also add a spotlight. And so what a spotlight is going to do is where an omni light shines light in um, all different directions, what a spotlight is going to do is a spotlight is going to shine light in one direction. So a spotlight is basically a light with direction. So um, you can see how as, when I place this, this light is only shining in this direction. And so what that means is you can point this at different locations or different things inside your rendering. So you can see how by adjusting the rotation here, I can adjust the direction in which this is pointing. So you can use this to point in a certain direction. You can also adjust things like the angle. So like for example, if I adjust the angle in here, you can adjust how uh, how directed that light's going to be. So you can see how if I put a very um, if I put a very small angle in here, that's only gonna shine like right on one point. Or if I click and drag this up like this, it's gonna, the light's gonna go outward a little bit more. So you can use this to kind of adjust the, the way and the direction in which that points. And then the other thing you can adjust is the attenuation, meaning um, how far the light is going to travel from this particular light. So if I turn my attenuation down, you can see how the light's gonna travel less distance. So like for example, I can turn my attenuation to like six feet and all it's gonna do is cast on this point. Um, if I turn my attenuation up higher, then you can see how that light's gonna go further. And after a certain point, that doesn't really affect this too much anymore. Um, but uh, you can see how you can definitely use this in order to uh, in order to really fine adjust where your light goes and how far it goes and things like that. This will also cast shadows. So you can see how I can turn on shadows being calculated based on where this light is located. And there's multiple different lights in here that act different ways that are all spotlights. So all of these IES lights are all spotlights, but they all act different depending on which one you select. So you can pick the ones you like and bring those into your rendering. So there's also an option in here for a neon light. And the neon light is can act more like a light bar or like a long light. So you can see how when I bring this in, this light is gonna be more rectangular in length. And you can see how you can click and drag this to adjust the length of that light. So like for example, in this case, I don't need this to be 
any longer than this opening in here. So I could adjust the length of that using the settings over here and I could kind of fine place this. So and you can see how you can adjust and rotate that light as well. But it's basically like a bar that's shining light outward. And you can set if that casts shadows as well, um, as well as all the other settings that you could set with the other lights. And so one of the things that's a little bit unrealistic about this right here is that at the moment I've got kind of a, I've got a light in here that is casting light downward, but the problem is it's unrealistic in the sense that there's really no there's really no point that that light is emitting from, right? So it looks really weird in here because there's nothing that this light is coming from. It's just shining light down here and there's no point in here. And I, I don't know that you can turn a point on in twin motion. And so what you need is you need to add something in here that kind of shows you where the light is coming from. And so what we're gonna do just for this example is we're just gonna add a primitive real quick. So a primitive is just gonna be a shape that you can drag into twin motion. And I'm just gonna scale that down. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a special kind of material to this called an emitter. And so what an emitter is gonna do is that's actually going to be a material material that emits light. And so in order to do that, we've got this point in here. Well, we're just going to use the material picker and we're going to select this. And what we can do is we can use, we can apply a color to this that emits light. So in this case, we're just going to leave it as the M base color for right now. And I'm just going to go into my settings. And if you look in your settings, there's actually an option in here for glow. And you can see how what glow does is this will take this material and it'll make it actually emit light. So now what we have, instead of what we had before, is now we've got kind of a spotlight look right here. So we've got a spotlight right here, but then we've also got an object in here with a material applied to it that actually glows. So this is going to emit light. And so one thing I want to point out is a lot of the time, depending on the surface area of your light, um, the, the more area you have, the more light this is going to emit. But like, for example, if I go in and turn off this spotlight, you can see how this little light isn't enough to really light this area by itself. So usually what you'll see is you'll see a combination of spotlights or omni lights and emitters like this in order to really kind of fill out that lighting inside of your renderings. And I do want to note there are a couple other materials in here that are also emitters. So not only can you set a material as an emitter like we just did, we can also look into our materials and we can see that there's some neon materials. And so when you drag those in and apply those to something, like let's say I applied that to these countertops, you can see how these countertops are going to emit light. And so when these emit light, you can see how they're lighting my scene. And because there's so much surface area, those do a better job of lighting the scene. So a lot of the time where you'll use this if you have a, is if you have like a hanging lamp like this one, you'll apply a color to the lamp and then you'll go into your settings and you'll turn the glow up and in this case, this seems to be taking on the glow of these uh, spotlights pretty well. So it's probably not that big of a deal, but a lot of the time you'll set the materials inside of these um, to be an emitter so that your lighting looks more realistic. All right, so let's take a look at one more example inside of Twin Motion. So I'm gonna turn my daytime on so we can see a little bit better. Um, but let's say, for example, that we had this space in here, but then we wanted to add some lighted objects like some bollards outside. Well, what we would do is we would go into the furniture section in the city and we would look under street lights and I'm just gonna drag this enticing street light in here. And obviously this is supposed to be used for something else, but we're gonna use it for this. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna scale this down. And then we will set this, we'll rotate this 180 degrees. What you're gonna notice when we get into nighttime is this light right here is set as an emitter. So this material on this face is set as an emitter. If you go into the settings, the glow is set to 100%. Well, what we would do is for this particular object, we would add a spotlight. So we'd go to lights and we'd select a spotlight and probably I would select one that's maybe a little bit, a little bit wider, not quite as, not quite as directed. So maybe something like this IES 10 and then we would add this in here. 
and we would rotate this so that it points out. So what we have is we have a spotlight in here in addition to our emitter, and what we can do is we can adjust that intensity up to adjust the brightness that's being shined out here by that emitter material. So I could bring that up to maybe like a 5000 or something like that. And one thing you might want to consider is actually looking up the values that lights actually um, that lights actually emit in real life because that'll allow you to get a lot more accurate lighting in here but then we could just take this and select both the bollard and the IES light we would use the move tool and then we would create a couple different copies. And I'm just holding the shift key and dragging that in order to do this. So you can see how now what I have is I have these three lights out here um, that are casting light that you can then see whoops, from inside your building. So, and then the last thing I wanna talk about is now that you've got this lighting in here, you can see how, let's say that we were to go in here and we would add an image like this one. So we'll just create a new image and we were to render that. So we've created our new image. We'll go to image four and we'll go ahead and export that. And then we open up our image. You can see how this gives us a pretty good image, but one thing we're not really getting is we're not getting the lighting reflecting off of this glass in here. So what we could do in order to get the light off of this glass and get this to really kind of reflect that is to add in a reflection probe, which we've talked about in a previous video, but we'll go ahead and we'll add one of those in. And I will link to that video in the notes down below, but it's just in volumes in your library. And so what the reflection probe is going to do is this is going to set this so that it's actually calculating the reflections of the light inside of this rendering. So what you'd want to do is you'd want to make sure that this box is going to be big enough that it contains all of your different glass in here. But you can see how now I'm getting a reflection off of this glass that I wasn't necessarily getting before. So with this reflection probe in here, and note that that will make your computer run a bit slower. So be kind of choosy about how you use this. But let's say we have a reflection probe in here and then we do another rendering. So we'll just export image 04 again. So this is our original image and I'll kind of shrink this down. And then this is our new image right here. And you can see how now we're getting some reflections of the different lights coming off of our glass that we weren't before. So by adding those reflection probes and using those, the other thing is you'll notice that the, the contrast of the shadows here is much more realistic on this one than it is on this one, just because this is actually calculating the bouncing of the light. So you, you can use the reflection probe to get that extra little bit of realism inside of your rendering. So that's kind of a quick overview of the artificial lighting types available inside of Twin Motion. If you want, we can get more in depth on some of the features or something like that, but this should give you a pretty good idea of where to get started. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.